No, no, not again. This wasn't supposed to happen again. Amelia fell to her knees in the burning wreckage of her home, her mind rushing back ten years prior, when the most feared necromancer in the land heard of a halfling village fallen to gnolls. They might think a monster that even eats bones wouldn't leave much for a necromancer, but they were never great at sniffing out magic, figuring even the little hamlet would have some sort of mage to raid. They reviled as Merelda swooped into the wreckage. At first glance, nearly anything of value was gone, but she knew wizards well, so it didn't take too long to find and trace a trail of magic. Tucked away in an unassuming hole, was a hidden door, arcane power sealing it from the inside. Trivial for her to remove, of course. She found a library with a child no larger than her hat. The creature's beer was to be expected, but the collection of tomes spread out on the floor would imply it had cast the lock itself. And was that the glimmer of a ward around her? Now that was intriguing. She might make a competent apprentice. And the lack of remaining ties greatly reduced the risk of treachery, especially since it wasn't her fault this time. Yes, that settled it. She was taking the child. Years went by and she grew fond of little Amelia, though she'd never admit it. The girl was clever and most importantly, loyal as a dog. Easily the best treasure that Ruin had to offer. That said, she was never allowed to travel. Far too trusting and eager to make friends. Not to mention gullible. She still thought she was rescued out of some sort of kindness. Of course, that wasn't really the case, was it? Amelia knew she was only taken because she was useful. She just couldn't bear being alone. And besides, the cottage was guarded against external threat. Not a little girl already on the inside. She knew everything about Esmeralda. It just didn't matter. She knew that under the strict facade, she was love. And didn't really care much beyond that. That. Especially when she had all these new friends, her skeleton buddies. Not much personality, but nothing a little imagination couldn't flesh out. However, nothing could last. She'd been out gathering ingredients and making flower crowns for her undead when she saw smoke, heard the clank of falling feet, holy men in full plate. They honed in on her friends like a compass, burned them with wicked night, but she managed to get away herself, run back to the cottage. Amelia fell to her knees in the burning wreckage of her home. No. Never. Again. She knew what to do, and she had to act fast. Grabbing the pack of spellbook that any good witch would hide, she started a ritual far more complicated than she had any right to try. Magic is an art, and determination and sacrifice can partially compensate for a botched rune or improperly prepared body. It wasn't perfect, just a gilded skull that could sometimes speak, but it was enough. The soul was bound, and even seemed to have some memory. She wouldn't be alone. That said, nothing was left for her here, so it was time to explore this forest she called home. Find new friends, avenge the old, and this time she'd protect them. No no one was ever getting taken from her again. Ah, little Amelia. Nothing teaches mortality like a warband, or morality like a witch hunt, or a necromancer. Her moral compass is drawn in crayon. Her main goal in life is to invent a better undead, one that keeps its rational thought but doesn't turn into a monster. Her methods are dubious, but her intentions are sound. She just wants to be loved. Truly loved, mind you. She might act like she doesn't know the enemy wants her dead, but honestly, she just doesn't care. An enemy's just a friend who doesn't know it, and petty things like death don't really bother her kind. With a pleasant smile and a flower crown, she'll make a friend out of everyone. Everyone, one way or another. Thanks to my copy supporters for the patronage, especially top supporters like Barrow Goblin and Sergeant Daniels. You help me keep improving. See ya!